This is African News Tonight on The Voice of America. Hello and welcome. Welcome to African News Tonight. Thank you for joining us. I'm Yehayas Wuhib in Washington. Here's what's coming up on African News Tonight. There are people waiting to get this matter resolved so that they can come and invest into our mining, into our agriculture, into manufacturing, tourism, and so forth. So we need the debt to be resolved. That's Zambian Finance Minister Situmbiko Musokotwani talking about efforts to renegotiate his country's debt. Details coming up. Also, the UN chief called for urgent aid for Somalia. And allegations arise that South African banks aid Zimbabwean gold smugglers. These stories and more on African News Tonight. But first, our top story. In Zambia, the U.S. and the Chinese ambassadors to Zambia jointly say their two nations will put their differences aside to help the Southern African country address its $14 billion debt overhang. Some analysts say the debt situation in Zambia is unsustainable and it's making the country unattractive for both local and foreign investors. The Zambian government delegation led by Finance Minister Situmbiko Musokotwani is in talks with the World Bank and IMF officials about finding ways to restructure the debt. Muso Kotwani is in Washington to hold talks with IMF and World Bank officials during their spring meetings in Washington. VOA's Peter Cloti sat down with the minister and asked him about Zambia's economic outlook and the prospects of the talks with the IMF and World Bank officials. Uh, the first expectation is that right now, priority number one for Zambia is to push for the issue of the debt relief for Zambia to be completed. That's priority number one. Uh, This is so because as long as the debt issue remains unresolved, uncertainties remain in the economy in terms of uh, investment, in terms of people who participate in our local financial markets. So this is causing uh, uncertainty and we need to get the matter resolved. So in coming here, We are talking to executive directors uh, of various countries, especially those with the uh, biggest influence at the IMF and the World Bank, to plead with them. Uh, I know they've been assisting a lot, but to plead with them just to keep on pushing and get this matter resolved. So currently, what would you say is the economic outlook in Zambia, looking at the debt situation? How challenging does it make uh, the overhang of this debt issue. The economy is uh, doing reasonably well. For this year, 2023, we expect the growth to be just over 4%, which is not bad. Inflation is just under 10% for more than 20, for more than 20% uh, sometime uh, last year. But where we have challenges is the issue of jobs. There are people waiting to get this matter resolved so that they can come and invest into our mining, into our agriculture, into manufacturing, tourism, and so forth. So we need the debt to be resolved so that we begin to make a mark on employment, especially for the youth. Mr. Finance Minister, talking about the debt situation, recently in Lusaka, your capital, the U.S. ambassador and the Chinese ambassador made a statement about uh, Zambia's $14 billion debt. What does this mean for Zambia and for these two countries to put up, saying they put aside their differences to help? The statement by the two ambassadors is very important because China is uh, a creditor country to Zambia, okay, but also has been donating the Chinese have made a lot of donations to Zambia. America similarly uh, supports us a lot, especially in the area of uh, uh, health. So when they come together and uh, put issues of their issues uh, aside and say let's work together to get Zambia out of the debt crisis, we are extremely grateful for that uh, for that event. 
That was Zambian Finance Minister Situ Biko Musko Tuwani speaking in Washington with my colleague Peter Cloutie. There will be more of this interview on VOA's Nightline Africa show this weekend and on voaafrica.com. At the International Monetary Fund and World Bank annual spring meetings here in Washington, IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva said, Despite the resiliency of consumer spending in the United States and Europe, the outlook is not great for poor countries. We have been wrestling with one crisis after another, one shock after another, and that has pushed on the back burden the longer-term agenda of structural reforms that are paramount to uplift productivity. And with productivity remaining low, the prospects for growth are low. Georgieva made the comment yesterday at the opening of the week-long meeting in the opening session with Georgieva. World Bank Group President David Malpass said it is important there be more investment in small businesses and new businesses, especially in developing countries. He also said it is going to take more than lowering interest rates. If you just lower the interest rates back down, it won't solve the problem. What that means is that people will suffer from inflation. Uh, The dollar weakens, the inflation rate goes back up, and that hurts the poor the most. So I think there has to be a goal of finding a low inflation environment and dollar stability for the future. The IMF and World Bank are looking at debt restructuring for several developing countries, including Ghana and Zambia. Georgieva said the meetings were a good opportunity for lenders to discuss how to restore price stability, but also consider the longer-term prospect for growth in low-income countries. We'll have more on the World Bank on all the VOA Africa news programs this week and on voaafrica.com. Pirates have boarded a Chinese-run oil tanker in West Africa's Gulf of Guinea. The Associated Press says that pirates boarded the ship Success 9 about 500 kilometers southwest of Ivory Coast's capital on Monday. The London-based risk management company EOS Risk Group told the Associated Press that it is not clear how many crew members or pirates are on the vessel. The head of the company said it could be a kidnap and ransom incident or cargo theft. The Associated Press says the Gulf of Guinea is the world's most dangerous spot for attacks on ships. On March 25th, pirates boarded a Danish-owned oil tanker with 16 crew members off Port Point Noir in the Republic of Congo. French naval forces located the vessel and have escorted it to Lome, Togo. In South Africa, the High Court in Pretoria has started hearing court challenges to plans to terminate residency permits for nearly 180,000 Zimbabweans. VOA's Zimbabwe service reporter Blessing Zulu is closely monitoring the hearings and briefed me on the latest. The latest is that, of course, uh, the hearing has uh, started uh, in Pretoria with the lawyers representing the Helen uh, Sussman Foundation uh, and also the Zimbabwe Exemption Permit Holders Association in the Zimbabwe Immigration Federation uh, presenting their case and uh, arguing against uh, the uh, proposal by the minister to terminate by June 30 the so-called Zimbabwe exemption permits that allow about 178 to 180,000 Zimbabweans uh, to work legally in South Africa. So, Blessing, uh, is Zimbabwe ready to absorb all these people? Uh, The... The government of Zimbabwe itself is saying that uh, it is ready. Uh, in fact, uh, President uh, Emerson Mnangagwa actually met President Cyril Ramaphosa and uh, the Director General of the um, IOM uh, on the sidelines of the African Union Summit in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, in February. And uh, they all agreed that uh, the uh, situation in Zimbabwe has improved Uh, And the IOM uh, director promised uh, that uh, they will also avail funds for those Zimbabweans willing to go back home uh, to return. 
and uh, Mr. Mnangagwa uh, actually said that uh, he was ready to receive uh, those Zimbabweans. Uh, but uh, in court today, the Helen Sussman uh, Foundation lawyers are saying that uh, all evidence uh, points to the contrary, uh, that uh, Zimbabwe is not ready to, uh, the situation has not improved in Zimbabwe. They are also quoting, for example, the uh, World Bank, uh, arguing that uh, 49% of Zimbabweans are living in extreme poverty. Inflation until lately has been one of the highest uh, in the world, second only to Venezuela. So the lawyers are saying it's clear that uh, Zimbabwe is not yet ready to receive uh, those um, people uh, coming from uh, from South Africa. And uh, the president, uh, Mr. Mnangagwa, had actually uh, dispatched an interministerial committee to look into the issue of uh, repatriating Zimbabweans who are willing to come back from South Africa. And uh, talking to the Zimbabwe ambassador in South Africa, Mr. David Hamadziripi, he says that uh, there is no interest you know, not many Zimbabweans are uh, expressing a willingness to go back uh, to Zimbabwe, uh, which is uh, problematic. So the lawyers are saying that uh, contrary to what uh, the politicians are saying, many are not uh, ready to return to Zimbabwe. The residency permits uh, Zimbabweans have in uh, South Africa uh, number to 180,000. Uh, some say there are over 3 million. Zimbabweans in South Africa. That's uh, very true. Uh, as the political and uh, economic uh, crisis in Zimbabwe uh, worsens, and especially, you know, this year, the elections expected uh, between the 26th of July and uh, August 26, there's always violence. And um, after elections, because of the bickering between politicians, you know, not many people are willing to invest in Zimbabwe. There are also allegations of corruption. So what happens is um, South Africa is the closest and more stable country uh, that is attractive to Zimbabweans and uh